has out at Dinosaur National Monument, which are in place, have th this much space between them. They're, the problem they, here is not. the exact relationship uh, between breastbone, shoulder, and backwards. ribs. What it'll do, this will dictate our ribs. Exactly. Uh, that's how we're going to work it, okay. because it, yeah, the up there is yeah, it's so distorted. The, it isn't the possible that these come down a bit further, is it? Right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can see that seems to be an articulation, right? Right here. Okay. All right. Fine. Good. And this this may have been connected in life because I mean, this is sure. definitely a cartilage sure. surface. Sure. 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 That looks good. Okay. I, that looks good to me. <laughs> In December 1991, the new construction opened in New York City at the American Museum of Natural History. Paleontologist Mark Norell. Well, when we decided to put them out together, we wanted to have something that represented some of the new thoughts about dinosaurs as opposed to the way mounts have traditionally been made. What visitors see is a slice in time from about 150 million years ago. A mother barasar rears up on the huge pillars of her hind legs to defend the baby crouched behind her tail. The threat comes from an allosaur, a meat-eating dinosaur with razor-sharp fangs. The barasar has only its huge bulk and the small front legs for weapons. Savage claws and speed favor the allosaur. I think that it represents something very dynamic, and it really gets the idea across that dinosaurs were living animals that had very active lifestyles, very much like modern living animals do. The mount itself has been the subject of considerable debate. Is this true science? How much did barasars care about their young? And even if they wanted to protect them, could they have done it like this? Rearing up on their hind legs? So of course the fossils don't tell us that they could actually do this, but they don't tell us they couldn't do it either. So what this represents is something just speculative, something to capture your imagination. Here at the museum, science and imagination have merged. Science needs imagination. It is more than a matter of putting bones together like so many tinker toys. This exhibit could have been assembled only by a coalition of science, informed guesswork, and creativity. That creativity has been pushed to its limits in recent years as scientists have used every weapon in their armory to pierce the most intimate secrets of the dinosaur's life. How they ate, how they digested, how they reared their young, and how they died. I knew that if we were going to tell the story of the origin of dinosaurs, we had to come here. We can look at his jaws and imagine the great gulps of flesh it could have taken from the thigh of Desmatosuchus, whatever. What's striking about the fossils we find here is the incredible low diversity of species. I thought to myself, something's here. And Bob picked up a little dentary with teeth in it. And he looked at it and he, his mouth fell open and he said, you're right, Jack, this is a baby dinosaur. 